So you imagine that in order to become an engineer, look, obviously not everyone becomes an engineer. You have to have a particular temperamental proclivity to become an engineer. You have to be extraordinarily interested in things rather than people. He was just doing what an engineer type would do when someone asked him to provide feedback because he's not thinking politically. He's not thinking, oh, they just want to hear what they already said. He thought they actually wanted some facts. 90, 95, is it 95? I think it's 95. One person eight to one person in 20. Then you can be a attorney, a research analyst, an editor, an advertising manager, a chemist, an engineer, an executive manager, etc. That's, that's the, now, that's not the high end for IQ, by the way. And then also, to really be good at it, you probably have to be reasonably stress tolerant and also somewhat conscientious. So, you, you know, people, and you think, well, why is it that smart people are at the top of dominance hierarchies? And the answer to that, in part, is because they get there first, right? I mean, everything's a race, roughly speaking. And the faster you are, the more likely you are to be at the forefront of the pack. And intelligence, in large part, is speed. That's not all of it is. So if you're moving towards something difficult rapidly, the faster people are going to get there first. Exactly. But as a clinician, you're not a scientist. You're, a, you're an engineer of the soul. That's a better way of thinking about it, because it's an applied, it's like engineering, it's an applied science. So that makes it not a science exactly. You can use scientific knowledge, but you're still aiming at the good, right? There's only one answer to that, as far as I know, that, that works, is get your act together. You're going to be the person who's working in AI, right? I know some of these people. They better be good people, because they're going to build whatever they're like into their machines. So they better have their heads screwed on straight, because they're going to get amplified like mad. Well, most of those people are men. And if you want to become a nurse, well, then you have to be much more interested in people than you are in things. And most of those people are women. And so you get differences in occupational choice that are also, by the way, quite great in Scandinavia, especially in the case of engineering and nursing, that are mostly due to biological differences. And you cannot minimize that by social engineering. Whereas men are more likely to um, manifest interest in occupations that have to do with things. In the Scandinavian countries, the ratio of male nurses to female nurses is 1 to 20. And of, male, of female engineers to male engineers is 1 to 20. And the governments now and then do a big push to try to get more men into, um, into nursing and more women into engineering, and with a lot of push and a lot of advertising and marketing and so forth, they can shift the, the proportions to some minor degree, but as soon as they stop pushing hard, they just snap back to 1 in 20. Your story is really interesting, you know, because I think it's such a classic story of, of an engineer getting tangled up in politics. And it's working, you know, you see someone like Elon Musk, I mean, what the hell do you make of someone like that? Hard work actually works and with virtually everything. It might not make you the best at whatever it is you're pursuing, but it will certainly make you better than you are.